Welcome back to The Hive Doctor, your beekeeping mentor. It's my job to take the guesswork out of beekeeping for you. Today I'm going to be going into a little bit more depth about another video I did, and that's cleaning up your beekeeping equipment during the winter and getting it ready for spring. In the previous video, I showed scraping the boxes and frames a little bit, but today's is going to be a lot more in depth because I've got a lot more equipment to clean up, and there's a lot more burr comb wax buildup. I'm going to show you how to collect that while you're cleaning things up and exactly what to do, what surfaces to clean, what not to clean, and how to save that valuable beeswax instead of throwing it away. Plus at the end, or near the end, I've got a bonus tip for you for whenever I'm going to be putting these hive bodies back together frame-wise, um, a tip to help you and your hives battle Varroa mite. So stick around. So the first box I'm cleaning up today has a lot of burr comb on the bottom bars of the box. I've got this deep hide body set on end because I didn't want to crush all of this good beeswax. Right now it's cold outside and beeswax is brittle in the cold. So in the warmer weather it's quite pliable and it wouldn't be a big deal. It's more like putty. So I'm going to show you how to clean this. You don't have to take the frames out to do it. In fact, what you want to do is take your hand and put it on the top bar against the frame that you're going to be working against to help keep the frame in place. And you're going to take the wide flat end of your hive tool and start at the top and start scraping your way down. But before you do that, I really recommend that you do this on a surface where all of the beeswax that you scrape off will be able to fall onto and you can collect. Don't do it out on the ground or you won't be able to, to keep it and collect it and use it later. In my case, what I'm doing is I'm using my bed slide. I'm just going to scrape all of the beeswax from these boxes I'm cleaning today right under the bed slide, and I'm going to sweep it up into a five gallon bucket so I can melt it down later. So, in starting this process, I'm going to start on this end, and I just go down, start on the next frame. Sometimes it's kind of hard, especially with that older dark comb where brood has been put in the comb before. A lot of it will come off in big chunks like this. That's when it's super easy. Usually the older comb will do that. New comb kind of crumbles and is even more brittle. But this is the first step in getting this weird burr comb, extra buildup beeswax cleaned up so that you can actually start to clean up each frame individually. So when I'm finished this, I'm going to scoop all of this beeswax into a five gallon bucket, like I said. And then that's the part where I take out the frames individually and start cleaning them up and making them real nice all around the frame. Now that I've got all this burr comb scraped off the bottom bars, I went ahead and scooped it into my five gallon bucket here on the ground. I just want to now take this box and set it flat. And at this point I can take the flat end again of my hive tool, which is great for cleaning up equipment, and just scrape along the top bars. Real nice and easy. Get all that extra beeswax scraped off. That way when I put equipment on top of this later in the spring and later in the year, I'm not gonna be squishing bees because when the beeswax sticks up, Whenever I put another box on, it's full of bees. There's a chance of that squashing a bee on the underside of the other box. And as beekeepers, one of our main goals is to prevent as much as possible honeybee mortality, of course. So now I've got the bottom bars scraped off clean and the top bars. It's time to start taking the frames out. And again, these are follower boards I'm throwing away, but I'm going to scrape the, the beeswax off of them before I toss it. And I want to clean up the box first, I, just because I don't feel like cleaning the frames first. So what I'm going to do is just set the frames aside. And most of the time I've run nine frames in my 10 frame boxes with follower boards, but I'm changing things up this year so that I can give my bees not only more room to lay uh, and have a larger brood nest, but also like I said at the beginning of this video, I've got a pretty cool technique for 
helping fight against Varroa mite, which I promise I'll be showing you soon. Now that I've got my deep hive body empty, and this is the same for honey supers, any box, um, what you want to clean up first is to make sure that these frame rests are clean. And that's one of the things we went over in the first video about cleaning up equipment. And this isn't beeswax. In the frame rest, this is going to be propolis. That's that resinous material that honeybees gather so they can glue things together. And this is actually easier to clean in the cold weather because the propolis and the beeswax are so brittle. It comes off the box is much easier. All right, so I've got the frame rests cleaned up and they're ready. Now I'm gonna take the hook in of my hive tool and uh, start pulling towards me on all of the edges of the box, top and bottom. That makes sure that whenever I stack equipment on a hive and I add more boxes, that I've got a nice even seal. Those boxes, they come in flush and there's no gaps. And you can collect the propolis too. I'm not gonna go over what you can do with that. That's beyond the scope of this video. Plus I've never done it. But the reason you don't want to waste beeswax and why you should definitely collect your beeswax is because it's worth money. Whether you're going to make candles for yourself and save money by not buying candles, or you could sell it to someone who wants to use beeswax. I, I have quite a few people who are always asking me for beeswax because they want to use it in their salves and their um, like chapsticks, lip balms, lotions, whatever. But there's also one really awesome potential in your area. If you can find a place that sells uh, beekeeping equipment, a lot of times when you take them filtered wax, in other words, you've already melted it down and filtered all the junk out of it, and you give them a nice solid block of beeswax, some of them will give you cash or store credit for that that you can trade in and get more beekeeping equipment from. So now that I've got that edge clean, I'm gonna flip this over, clean the bottom edge. So after you've scraped all edges, top and bottom, that's when you're gonna flip your box up, take the wide end of your hive tool and start scraping the inside. And that'll be a mix of between propolis, and bees and beeswax. And you want to do this to all four, all four sides inside. And to get the corners, use that hook end of your hive tool. It makes it way easier. We're almost done with this box, and it'll be cleaned up and ready for putting frames back into. So at this point, I can just clean one frame at a time. And as soon as it's clean, put it right back into the deep hive body. And you can be as meticulous as you want to with this kind of job. Totally up to you. So I haven't cleaned my deep hive body frames yet, and I will. But just to give you what I told you I would in the beginning of the video, I want to show you a way to help control Varroa mite in your colony. What I'm going to do is first put a deep hive body frame on the outside. Then I'm going to take a medium super frame and put it as a second frame in. And I'm gonna do the same on this side. It's gonna get that outside deep hive body frame fully drawn, and then another medium honey super frame as the second frame in. The rest of this will be filled with deep hive body frames. And these two frames, second in, will always be medium honey super frames. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why. So the reason I'm putting these medium honey super frames in my deep hive body boxes for controlling varroa mite. First off, have you ever seen those green frames? They're the same size as a deep hive body frame, but they're green and they're made for drone comb. And the idea behind those is that you put it in the hive, the queen lays it full of eggs, and because varroa mite develop more fully and more prolific clary, Proliferously, plurif yeah, there's more of them on drone brood because drone brood takes longer to incubate and therefore mature into an adult bee. Varroa mite has a lot more time to develop and increase its population as well. So the idea behind that green frame, which I'll try to find a picture of for you, is to take out of the hive at a certain time and put it in the freezer and freeze the drone brood, but 
the Varroa mite along with it. So you're greatly and drastically reducing the Varroa mite population. Well, that's great and it does work. Um, but there's another way you can do it without spending that money on these green drone frames, which eventually warp anyways because they're plastic. They'll warp and they won't like fit back straight into the high body box again. So bees love to make, take empty cavities and build more beeswax into it. So when I put this kind of frame in a deep hive body box, I've got a gap at the bottom because it's not as deep as the box is. And the bees are going to build extra beeswax on the bottom of this frame. Very much so like this. It'll just look like an extra strip of this beeswax all the way across the bottom frame. And for some reason when the bees do this, it's generally drone comb. And so the queen's gonna lay this on the bottom of this frame full of drone comb. So every time I come into the yard, the, the, my apiary, during a hive inspection, I will remove these two frames and find that comb that, she, that's, that the bees built up along the bottom here, and I will scrape it the way I showed you in the beginning of this video. I'll scrape that right into a five gallon bucket. And because I'm doing that, I'm getting rid of all the varroa mite from the hive that are in that drone brood, plus I'm collecting valuable beeswax at the same time. So the reason I put these in the second frame in is because bees need that straight structure that we give them as beekeepers to build nice and straight and even. If we didn't have any frames in here, bees would still build comb in here, but it would be all crisscrossed and connecting together and we couldn't do anything with it. So by putting this in the second frame in, I'm allowing the outer frame and the next frame against that medium honey super frame to be the guide for my bees to build nice and straight. They've got a guide on either side to say, hey, this is where the comb goes, put it here to make it look nice. And it'll be easier for me to come along and to remove that frame, scrape that drone comb, which is infested full of varroa mite, straight into a bucket, and then they'll rebuild it right back. And the queen will lay more eggs in it, producing more drone brood, and therefore more varroa mite. However, each time this is done, theoretically there should be less and less varroa mite. Now this is just one of four ways that I implement a varroa control program. And that's the one that, this is the only one I'm showing in, you in this video today. The others will, are coming in, in future videos. They might already be out to recap with today. Clean up your boxes, get them ready for spring, save that beeswax, don't get rid of it. And I recommend trying this method of uh, just one way to control the varroa mite count in your beehive. So let me know what you think about this. Comment below, drop me one of these, and uh, subscribe. Tell your other beekeepers friends about the Hive Doctor. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. As always, thank you for watching. To my apprentices, don't forget to drop me one of these. Check the description and the links below for the tools and equipment and gear that I use. And don't forget to subscribe.